there. Welcome back to the Board Game Specialists. I'm Carla. And I'm Melanie. And today we are talking about our top nine bird games. Now, we had a little mini episode last week and we had said, I had said this was a fairly easy topic for me, but for you, is it a little bit tougher, you said? I, I had to get a little creative or I thought I had to get a little creative on what would kind of be enough. And then it was like, okay, Lee, we need to play this game because this would fit in the, but we hadn't played it. So then we sat down and played the games so I could add it to the list. And then, as I mentioned, like my first draft included Happy Pigs. Which is <laughs> yeah. it's not a bird game at all. It's about raising pigs. But if you get the expansion, they have ducks and chickens and it adds a few birds. I was like, I could make it work that way. <laughs> but I ended up coming with other games like, well, I think this one would fit. So there, there's I, Happy Pigs is not on my list. Spoiler alert. But... <laughs> It is on? You said it is not. It's not. No, it's oh, not. Okay. I took it off. So, Because I was like, that's really stretching the definition. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. All right. Well, let, before we get into that, what have you been playing lately? Okay. So the game that got me into the hobby, like, you know, for a lot of people that talk about Catan and Definitely, I played Catan, but that didn't get me in the hobby because we just played Catan every week, multiple times a week, forever. It didn't. We didn't know there was any other games out there. <laughs> so, a- my brother got me King of Tokyo for my birthday, and I hadn't played it right away. But when he brought it over, he also brought Lord of Waterdeep. Oh, so nice. we had played Lord of Waterdeep, which is like a worker placement you know, resource management type of game. And you get these kind of contracts you're trying to com- to complete, but you got to get the proper colored cube in order to be able to fulfill it anyway. So I had the local ladies come in, like the my Acme uh, gaming ladies. So they, um, I mean, they play board games. They're not as exposed, I guess. So I was like, okay, well, I think you guys will like this one because how much I loved it. I hadn't played Lord of Waterdeep since 2020 it had been that Ooh. long so i was like Let, let's play this one so kind of put it out on the table kind of taught the game to everybody real quick and we played it and they were all like blown away at how great this game is and they all went home and got talking about it and with their husbands like oh my god we gotta play this game and like it's it's such a good game and it was one that was like And I know it's a good game and I love it and it's going to be my collection forever. And it just had been so long since I played it. And I was like, okay, new group is like, you guys need to try this game. So I was like, let's, let's play this. And it was just so good. I just, this game is just so, it's so well designed. Like it's such a neat, fun game and worker placement so you place your workers and then when you have no workers left you bring them back but if you play an intrigue card you get to replay that worker at the end as well so you get the benefit of playing a second action if you go at that location and you're collecting these quests and then i had just watched the movie um dungeons and dragons and they talked about water deep in there because it is dungeons and dragon themes so i was like okay we should play this again and it was just <laughs> it was the perfect game to play it was great how about you carla what have you played lately well remember back when we did our um resolutions our new year's resolutions oh, one yeah. of mine was to play all my t- all the tea games that we have between me and right friend. we have we have almost all of them i think well, we finally got one to the table almost halfway through the year. It's like <laughs> the end of April here and I'm... <laughs> you got one. <laughs> and Ashley actually pointed out, she goes, well, we're almost halfway through the year and we still haven't played one of these tea games you speak of. So I'm like, okay, we're playing one. So I uh, set this one up and um, played with just one of the expansions. This Which is one, one of the games um, late, uh, late pre... But which tea game was it that you played? Oh, sorry. T-O-T-Wakan. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Now I can't think of the name. It's Late Pre something is one of the expansions. But this is one of the games where they went too far with the expansions, I think. The the second... Well, there's a little mini expansion for the second one and then a big one for the third. And the third one, I still cannot 
like figure it out perfectly. Like there has been mm. no videos on it. Oh. I need my videos, people. I need to learn <laughs> from the videos. So now they're printing a big box of this game. So I'm hoping someone's going to post like either a playthrough or something using all the expansions so I can actually know that I have played this right. But we didn't play with that third one because it's quite complicated. But Anyway, so we played with just a mini one, which just adds another track. But what this is, is this has it's a beautiful board, and it's like set in the the era. I'm not sure if it's before Zulkin, like the game came after Zulkin, but I think the era is actually before. And so you are like these gods trying to. Um, I gotta think of the actual theme in this. It's just. You're just trying to move up these tracks and trying to move around this board. But the theme behind it, I think, is, you know, I, I, I actually don't know <laughs> how the theme ties in. But it's just beautiful. You are building this pyramid. That's the main theme. That is the big thing. This big pyramid in the middle of the board with these chunky tiles that are so cool. They each have like four different symbols on them. And as you're building them, you're stacking it at like a pyramid. And when you put them on top of other tiles you're trying to match symbols and there's all these cool little symbols that are on them now that's not the only thing you're doing you're also um, moving up these temple tracks and each track does something different um, one will give you cocoa which is the uh, like money throughout the game that's how you're paying um, you're feeding your workers you're also paying to go to different spots one of the tracks just is simply points and one is giving you resources. Now, the, what you need these resources for is to build the um, pyramid, but also to build up some of these houses if you're going to put down houses. How the game is played is with you just go around the board. It's a giant rondelle and your workers are dice. So you never roll these dice. These dice are set at different um, pips. At the beginning of the game, I think they're all set at one. And you start with three each, and they start at different areas on the board. And you can move up to three spaces cl in clockwise order. Now, each spot on the board will give you something. Some will give you resources, one you go to to build the pyramid, and one you go to to build houses. Um, there's one where you can go to get technology. Now, the technology is basically giving you bonuses throughout the game or like like a player power kind of but everybody can do all of them but it's interesting because once you do one you'll get that power throughout and then if somebody else comes there you're going to get points every time like a new person comes to that technology so you kind of want to be the first one to get as much technology as possible because every time another person comes you're going to get three points it is kind of a point salad game but it's not um I wouldn't say it's like Feld point salad ish. <laughs> it's more um, just, you know, figure out ways to, to get the most points, obviously. Now, the neat thing is these dice, as you move them across the board, they level up. So if I, once I move it to a spot um, and then I finish my action and it, say it's on a one, it moves up to a two. Um, you sometimes will try to get two dice on a spot because then you have a more powerful action. The higher the pip and the more dice you have, the better the action. A single one isn't going to get you very much. Mm. Now, once these dice get to a six, they ascend. So they go to the middle of the board and it's like they die. And then you get <laughs> to choose an action um, from there. And then that pip goes back down to a one or a three, now I can't remember, and it goes to the first spot on the board. So you get them back, but the whole point of us, um, leveling them up is for higher powers, but you kind of want them to, near the end of the round, to be low, because for when you're paying your workers after you're feeding them cocoa, the higher pips need two cocoa, whereas under three or under only need one. Uh -huh. So you have to, you're trying to plan it kind of where, okay, I kind of don't want them to be high near the end of the round because I don't have any cocoa. If you don't have any, you lose points for every cocoa that you're missing. So it's, it's a little tight there, but it's such an interesting game. I played this for the first time at Gob Fest, I believe, my first Gob Fest I went to. And I played with a bunch of people and just got absolutely destroyed. And I was like, whoa, what is this game? But it was one of those that you go home and you think about and can't stop thinking about. So I purchased it. It is actually even just buying the base game. It's very inexpensive. I think it was like a maybe not now. It's probably raised. It was like a $40 game, but comes with these really nice components. 
And I really recommend this one. I think this might have been before my top T game, but there might be one that has edged it out. But you will find that out later when I rank my T games after I hopefully play them all. So that was what I played. Nice. Now, are we ready to get into our bird games? Yes. Okay. Want me to start? Well, I have an honorable mention. Okay, you tell me that first. So, and I've put this one as an honorable mention because it was such a neat game when I played it. I really enjoyed it. Um, and the only thing that makes this a bird game is there's a bird on the box and then you never even think of birds ever again. And that's <laughs> Rook. Have oh, you ever played yeah. Rook? I have the box of it and I've been tempted or not tempted I've been told okay we're gonna play this we're gonna someone's gonna teach me and it never actually happened this is an old 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 game so it was published for the first time in 1906 like it's yeah, it's that's over nuts, 100 eh? years old right like it's one of those old card games so because of that there's a lot of different version of how people play it now I played this one with my friend Duncan he's the one who taught me the first time and it's a, like, so you could play, like, two to six players, but it's a, a, well, I don't know how you would make it at two, the way we played it anyways, but you play on yeah, teams. you need teams, don't you? Teams. Yeah, it was teams. Yeah. So it's a Trump-based trick-taking game. And what was really neat about it is you kind of divvy up the thing, and I think you're betting on who's going to count the, it's like, you're looking at it, it's like, okay, well, I'm going to bid and go, and then you pick the Trump suit for that round. And then you're going to pick a card, one that you don't have in your hand. And you can't pick the Rook card because somebody's going to have the Rook and that one is going to trump all. Like it's just, you can play it at one point and you just win that round no matter what. But you would pick a card, like a number and a suit, and that person who has that card is your partner that round. But you don't know who that is. And you're going around and certain cards will score. So like you'll be paying this. It's like, oh, this one is scoring. Okay, so hopefully I win this trick. And then you'll be like another person that adds points into like plays a card that's going to score. But they're like you're still winning the tricks. Like, oh, okay, I think that's my partner. But until they play the card you called out, you don't know for sure who your partner is. Right? And like the other the other team, they don't know which one – of the other players is going to be their partner either until that card is revealed. That was so interesting. So it's a team trick taking game and only one person knows who their partner is at the beginning of the round. And then you're playing and if like you succeed and then you tally up the points that you got and then each player scores because the partnership changes every time. So you score how much your team got that round and then the other team gets what they got and then you kind of go, but then there's a different partnership. And like, so it was so neat that there's a partnership going. You just don't know who they are. So <laughs> That's cool. It was, it was really cool. So I was like, okay, I, I got to talk about this one. I mean, it's a trick taking game about numbers and suits. So it's not about birds at all, but there's a bird on it, the box. Yeah. So it's a crow, I'm, right? It's a crow, yeah. So I'm yep. adding it into this category for that, and that's my honorable mention, Rook. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, my number nine is called Songbirds, and this was made in 2016 by – let me see if I can say this right – Yu Agasawara. Now, this is a card game. It is – I would say that it's very similar – well, not similar, but in the realm of Arboretum. Oh, okay. Now, I've um, only played this once, but it's awesome. And it's one of those games that I, well, I played it with Cherry, and I'm pretty sure she didn't like it. I know you would like it, because it's one of those games. <laughs> <laughs> I will try and sneak it in with Ashley once. We <laughs> have a big, long list of games like, my players don't like it, but I know you yeah. will, and we need yeah. to play. <laughs> I know. So this one, you are dealt a hand of cards, and there are four, is it four suits? I'm going to look here. I think it's five. No, four suits of birds, and they are numbered anywhere from one to 
seven, I believe, and they're different colors. And you are building a five by five grid, like everybody is building the same grid. You start with one bird in the middle, and what you're doing is you're just placing a bird next to one of the birds that's on there, not diagonally, but has to be like orthogonally adjacent to it. And now once you've completed a row or a column, that bird, the that column or row is going to score. And how it scores is whichever color bird has the majority. So if you have two green, like um, two red and one blue, but the green and red are tied, they're canceled out and the red wins that one. Okay. So unless um, like the blue had two higher numbers than the gr the two green or whatever, then the, the blue would. So you're going to put that scoring chip from that row onto the blue bird. So you have these cards out that will show you. So now that's not all because you're going to play your cards till you have one card left. Now, at the end of the game, what cards you have left is going to be one color. That's what you're going to score. So after all the columns and rows are scored, you're going to look at the birds that have the most, and then you're going to add, so say I had a blue card, and blue had, um, because each of the scoring chips have numbers on them. So some of them are like 12, some of them are 8. So you're trying to get the card you have left in your hand to be the highest score. It's very tricky. Because then, so say the blue had 10 points and I kept a 7 in my hand, I would add the 7 to 10 and that's my final score. And that's it. That's the whole game. But it's very, like, as you're playing, you're like, well, I don't want this to go here. I don't want to play my high blue because I want to keep the high blue for the end. But I want that the blue to win that rower and column. So you're trying to, you know, I don't know what to do. Plus, there's two cards. Maybe that was a two-player game but I think there's always a couple cards that are out of the game. So you don't know what, like I knew by the end, okay, chair, you either have the three of this or the seven of that. I'm really hoping the seven is in that pile we're not using because then you're going to get the high point. It's one of those games where it's like so simple, the rules, like you're playing a card in a grid, but it's like, fries your brain because like what <laughs> if i put this here oh no that's going to win that column but totally lose that column like it's very thinky i think you would like it but yeah that's my number 9 songbirds nice i found I this one you? at um uh, a thrift store for like oh, 3 dollars brand enough. new too and i'm like oh i got to get this <laughs> like i've heard of this one before and i think you talked about this one before but i haven't played it i so. think well it's in like it's from the Asian market, I think. But then this one, mine is made for an English. Yeah. Like it doesn't have any of the Asian words on it or anything. But when I looked online for the designer and everything, there was like Asian copies of it, which is really cool. So some of those games that come out of the Asian market are just so cool. Nice. Really yeah. Neat. Yeah. That's exciting. That looks, that sounds mm -hmm. cool. Okay. My yeah. number nine is a little bit of a stretch. <laughs> There is a bird in this game, but there's lots of other animals too. And that's Pina Parada. So Pina Parada was created in 2014 by Donald X. Uh, Vaccarino. And this is a card shedding game. So you have so many cards and the goal is to be the first one to get rid of your card. And to win the game, you need to complete your treasure map. Everybody starts with one piece of the treasure map, but you need three more pieces to complete the treasure map and it's pirate theme game. So you have all these animals, the artwork, first of all, the artwork is beautiful. Like this looks so neat. And you have these animals, like there is a monkey. There's, um, geez, what all is there? There's, um, um, there's a, a parrot, which is why I'm adding it to this one. Um, but there's all kind of these, I think there's a penguin as well, which also puts it in here. Yep. So there's all these different animals and they're all dressed up in pirate <laughs> outfits. Like it's yep. a neat, bright, cartoony drawing. And what's neat is most cards have two animals on it on either side. So you flip it over. One side will be the parrot. One side's the monkey. Or there's a rat. Or there's like all these different animals. And then it plays a little bit like Uno. As in the previous card had a monkey and a parrot, so then you could play either a card that has a monkey or a parrot. So, okay, well, then I'm going to play my monkey-penguin combination card, and so on. So you're playing the cards. 
What makes this game unique and interesting is that you have these rules, cards, tiles that gets added. And I kind of compare this one Uno meets Flux. So mm. you play like Uno, but you have the rules that keeps changing like in the Flux game. And so you have one is like, okay, well, every time you play a crocodile card, it skips the next player's turn. Or if you play this one, like there's all these different rules that's going to happen. And there's a big stack of these tiles. So there's a lot of different rules that you can introduce to this game. You yeah. start the game with three of them. Now, when you get rid of your hand, you get three of those tiles. You're going to take one to add to your treasure map because they're also the treasure map tiles. You're going to discard one of them and you're going to pick one to become a new rule that gets added to the game. And you will eventually get up to six rules. Then whoever gets rid of all their cards at the end, uh, when there's six rules out, will swap out a rule. You never get more than six rules. But I mean, it gets, it gets crazy. And you're playing as a, oh, but I just played a bunny, which means I can discard an extra card and I'm going to do that or whatever the rules are, right? And it's it's one that we've we've gotten this summer, so it's a fairly new to my collection. And it's one that we pull out and play fairly often because, first of all, it can play the whole family. And the artwork is interesting and the gameplay is so, is neat. Like it's, it's a neat game. So it, we've played it quite a few times now. And that's my number nine, Pina Parada. Yeah, that's a good one. All right. My number eight is Trails of Tucana made in 2019 by Aleph Svensson and Kristen Amundsen Otsby. Now this one is a roll and write and kind of a stretch on the bird just because it's it's got the toucan on the front he is also in or he or she is also in the game but that's basically the whole part of the bird but you are um tra tracing different paths from different villages to villages or symbols to symbols it sounds very simple but it is also very thinky because you're drawing terrain cards and at the two terrain that shows up, that's where you're going to make your connection. So if I draw a mountain and grassland, then I find a grassland and a mountain anywhere on my map and I draw a line there. You don't have to connect from there after. You can just draw unconnected lines all over. It's not going to help you though. But what you're trying to do is connect because you will draw on your map around the whole thing is these letters like A to F, I think, twice. So then wherever the two A's are, that's what you're trying to connect to get big points. But then you have all these different symbols on your board. So you have toucans, you have these little um, uh, yetis, you have like books, all different kinds of things. And you'll have two of each on the small map. If you flip it over to the big map, you'll have three of each that you want to connect. But as soon as you connect two, then you get to check off this little bonus and you get to add another path anywhere. So you want to make it so that you have, you set yourself up for once you get these bonuses to have a path that'll connect you and, and give you all these points. Now on the little map, you do two rounds after the first round, you'll count up your points. Sometimes you have very little points in the first round, but you have set yourself up so good because you only need a connection here, connection there and there, and you've got a whole bunch of things connected. So it's kind of a race for some of the connections, but because as soon as somebody gets one, the bonus gets flipped and nobody gets that. You'll still get your points and your own bonus on your card, but you won't get the big points. It's really cool, little interesting roll and write. One of my favorites, and that's Trails of Tucana. Nice. I haven't played that one. Yeah. Sounds interesting. Mm -hmm. All right. My number eight is actually, I heard Z Garcia talk about this in one of their top, 10 lists and I think it was like top two play a game or something and then I saw it and I was like oh okay well I'll get it and give it a try and this is called Odin's Ravens so it was created in 2016 by Thorsten uh, Gimir and this is a two player race game and each player plays as one of the raven and you have this wooden raven token that you play as and they're like they're great looking and then one is a white raven one is the black raven and you put these tile these like they're long skinny cards and you put them all in a row and these long skinny cards have 
a terrain, well, two terrain on it, one on the bottom, one on the bo uh, the top, and there's different terrains on there. So it could be that it's uh, blue skies, or it's like a desert, or it's forest, or it's this different terrain. And you put them all in a row. And what happens is you need to go, let's say, like all along the bottom row, all the way to the end, flip around and come all the way across the top row. And the first one to get back wins the race and wins the game. So it's a racing game. And you'll have cards in your hand that are terrain card. And so if I have my raven here and what's coming up is a desert tile, I need to have a desert terrain to play so that I can move over to the desert tile. And I think if you get a multiples in a row, that's like, oh, it's a desert, desert, desert. Then I get to move all the way through those three tiles with my one card. And then really? you get, I think so. I'd have to double Jeez. check. <laughs> Cause we just played it. Me and Cherry, she loves this game and we had gotten a rule wrong. I'll tell you after, but I'm going to have to look while you're talking. I thought <laughs> I, I like, I haven't played this in a while, but I thought that's how it played. But then you also have cards that oh, will awesome. affect that. You can kind of create shortcut for yourself and if you are able to push a card upwards so it pushes the bottom terrain up into the top tile then it kind of creates that it changes the terrain the other player has to go over and it kind of creates a gap so you can move ahead of that and was that right yeah oh okay good okay, I, like, I thought like, so what the heck did we even read these rules? Yeah, it says if there's a row of land spaces of the same type in front of a raven, the player can use the matching flight card to move the raven over all these spaces. Okay, yeah, yeah I, I better actually so. read these rules. So that's why you want to manipulate the card so you can kind of tr create bigger clusters on your side or break the clusters on the other player's side, right? And kind of mess them up. And so you're trying to make it all the way across, turn around and make it all the way back. And it's an interesting two-player race game like it was neat like i said z garcia had talked about it and i was like okay i think i want to i want to give this one a try and we me and lee played it we enjoyed it i think he he slaughtered me i was barely turned around and he won the race like it was it was a horrible defeat but it was a neat game and that's my number eight odin's ravens yeah, the art on this is just beautiful. And the brightness of those cards, mm -hmm. they're just something. But I have to tell you the rule we had gotten wrong. Yeah. Now we've gotten two wrong. But <laughs> you know the, the trickery cards? Yeah. Or the, like, the... The low-key cards or whatever they're called. Them. Yeah, the low-key cards. And I think, I can't remember how many you, oh, you get. 16, you get eight each. So you get to draw at the end of your hand. I'm not sure if you said it. I was looking for that box, but um, you get to draw three cards up, whether it's terrain or Loki or a mix of them. And yeah. then um, if you're out of your cards, you reshuffle them. Well, the Loki cards are only a one-time play throughout the game and they go away. Oh, you so guys we played were, them multiple times. We were just shuffling them back and having <laughs> two new piles and just kept using them, right? And then we read at the, finally like, oh no, you only get to use those once. Yeah. So it made for a very different game. But now this is going to be awesome because now you're really going to try and build up that train. To get well, that's why, yeah, you're trying to create these clusters and break their oh. clusters. And it's, it's an interesting, it's an interesting game for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I can't yeah. wait to tell Cherry. This is, she <laughs> loves this game. It's one of her favorites. This was actually my number 10. So it just, oh, just there you go. Yeah. My list. It's awesome. All right. Well, my number seven is called Q Birds, and this is made in 2018 by Stefan Alexander. So another card game. I have lots of bird card games on this <laughs> list. Um, yeah, I was going to look almost all of them, but nope, not all of them. So this one has these little, the art on this is these birds made out of blocks, basically, but they're still very cute. They're, um, there's a whole bunch of different suits of these of these birds and they don't have really like it doesn't matter the number on them i'm not even sure if there is numbers on them because it's just suits that matter really and so you have you build up this big grid in front of everybody of these birds and you'll have a hand of birds that you start with and on your turn you will place a bird down now you'll place it beside one of the ones that is out there and what you're trying to do is enclose a bunch of birds with two of the same birds on the outside 
of the rows. So I want the same bird on the left outside and on the right. And if I can do that, I get all the cards in the middle and then those get squished together. Now, if I can't do that, I just basically will play a card. I think you can also exchange some cards if you don't want to play a card or you do play one and you can exchange some. Now, what you're trying to do is get these sets of birds. So you're either trying to get a set of each type or of five, I think, different suits, or you're trying to get um, three sets of two different suits. So they're equally hard. I would say maybe the second is a little bit harder. But how you do that is, like I said, you'll gather all these cards. As soon as you have a set, you will get to place them down. If you have the full set, like the max, you get to place um, two down, I believe. But if you only have the minimum of the set, then you only get to place one. So it's that's all it really is, is a set collection game. But there's also like a mechanic in it where you can reset the round and then all everyone's cards go away. Now I can't remember exactly how that resets, but it really screws you because you have all these, you've got like two sets ready to go in your hand and then somebody somehow resets it and they're like, yeah, give me all your cards from reshuffling, redealing. And you're like, what? I had everything planned out from the grid. And so you can't, you know, do too much heavy planning. You have to kind of play really on the edge of your, <laughs> of your seat because someone could just end that round quickly but it's quite interesting and it's another little thinky bird card game there's quite a few of them and that's q birds my number seven and the i've seen this one it does look adorable i haven't yeah. tried it yet it doesn't sound adorable by just blocks they're made out of blocks but, but it does look cool cute. though yeah handy, all right my number seven is called grackles it was created in 2018 by sarah uh, Gray Bill and John Shalters. And this is about putting these crow like birds on telephone wires. And because I mean, you, you know, you'll drive by and you see all these birds lined up on phone lines or power lines or whatever. Yeah. So they've created this abstract strategy tile laying game based on that. You, you would love this. This is right up your alley. Um, but you play as a different color and you get all bunch of these little plastic tokens like they're little token chips and there's like you know the symbol of a bird on it and on your turn you're gonna add you either add a tile to the grid or you rotate a tile that doesn't have any tokens on it yet and then you can place a token on because these tiles will have the four colors. There's four colors indicated. So there's the black, the blue, the purple, and the green. So there'll be four dots on each of these tiles of these four different colors and they're different combination. So you put it down and then you can kind of rotate. And what you're trying to do is you're trying to get two of your color dot as widely spread out as you can. Then you'll put the two chips. And so let's, I play black. So I'll play black on this tile and then the two tiles over, I'll play a black on that tile and they're on the same line. So now I get to put a black chip in between those two tokens, creating my line on that particular telephone wire. And I got this line. And then the next player would go and then they would try to add lines to it. But you cannot cross, like you cannot create a line across another person's line. So then you're going to try to say, okay, well, you create a four line there. Well, I'm going to try to create a line here that stops your line. So you can't add on and make it longer. And then you create your own line. And then you're trying to create as many lines as you can, blocking and trying to make yours even longer and connect your tokens to other tokens and create. So it has a bit of like a go feel to it, kind of. Um, and then you create until like you've played all the tiles and then it's whoever has the most token on the board wins the game. But it, it's really like, I mean, it's simple to play. It's quick, but it's kind of like, okay, well, if I put it there, then I could create this long line and it kind of blocks those tokens from these tokens. So he's not going to be able to connect these. So, and like, it's, it's, it's very interesting. It was neat. Uh, it looks cool with all like the, the tile, the colored tokens you're adding to the tiles and but yeah so that's my number seven grackles that's a cool name i like that <laughs> yeah All the right. box looks my super num- cute too yeah that was the one i think you showed us that one when we were there maybe or yeah was 
They have, yeah. All right, my number six is Enchanted Plumes. This is made in 2021 by Brendan Hansen. Another bird card game. <laughs> and this one, you are building peacocks. And how you do that is there's all different suits of different colored of the feathers that you're going to build out your peacocks. And you start with the top and then build down to the body, basically. So the top of the peacock has to, ha well, it doesn't have to, but you typically would want low numbers, if not a bunch of zeros, because the top row is all going to be negative points. Yeah. And how you're building this is you have a hand of cards, and you can do, um, you first will draw cards. So you can either draw from the blind deck, or there is like a market Thing that is face up and you can draw from there or trade from there actually you you trade and then you can play um one or two cards i believe and you can play them in the same um the same peacock or you could start a new one <clears throat> you typically want to build the biggest ones you can but not always, because if you can't finish them, then you're not going to get the maximum points. You, like It might be a strategy to build a bunch of smaller ones, but you won't get big points off those. It's It sounds quite easy. You're just putting feathers down. But the thing is, the colors of the feathers matter, because the suits, because whatever colors I have in my top row, those are the only colors I can put in the next row, and so on and so on. So you you don't want to put all one color on the top because then that's your only option to build down. And once those cards run out, you can't use mm -hmm. anymore. So you're not going to finish your peacock. So it's a bit of a, a longer card game for what you would think. Like it takes about an hour to play this game, even with two people. Because you're trading back and forth to the market. So you're not going through the deck so fast that when that hen peacock comes up, which is like shuffled into the last, I don't know, 10 cards or so, mm -hmm. that just ends the game immediately. So it's quite a cute game and beautiful art as well, but very interesting. Another thinky filler and that's Enchanted Plumes. That one looks gorgeous. Yeah. Like it looks so good when you have it all out down and all spread out and you have this like amazing peacock feather you've created. But yeah, I haven't played it yet. And it's funny. I always thought you started down, work your way up. And you were saying it's like you start up, work your way down. So, ah, oh, okay. That makes more sense. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. And the bottom one, I didn't say once you you can like get to the bottom, you flip it over and then everything other than the negatives is worth double. So that is why you really want to complete that peacock. Nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. That, that would make a difference. All right. My number six is called crows. It's funny. You have all these beautiful birds and I have all these <laughs> black raven and crows. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a little different. They, they have the birds. <laughs> You get the pretty birds yeah. and then you get my birds. Um, but Crows was created in 2010 by Tyler Sigman. And this is the game that I was like, okay, well, we haven't played this one quick. Let's play because I need it for my list. So we pulled it out and me and Lee <laughs> played it. And oh my God, I was impressed. This is a really good game. So first of all, you have all these tokens that are crow shaped. Like there's a couple of different shape, but they all like these different crows that's a little wooden tote like wooden bits and you have these tiles so it's another tile laying game and you have tiles and you'll add them to this grid and the tile that you place down will either have a tree now it's like a tree that has no leaves and it. it's just like a black dead tree and either the tree will be empty or there'll be one two or three crows on it and then when you play the tile, if it has crows on it, you take that many crows and you put them on that tile because those birds came with the tree. If there's nothing on it, then you don't put anything on it. Like it doesn't get any crows. So you get the crows onto the tile and you kind of start with a nine by nine and you add your, oh, it's not even a nine by nine. It's like one gap, two, then gap, three. Like, and it's kind of like this checkerboard and then you can mm -hmm. fill in in between, but or you can have a tile that has a cemetery on it. Or you can have a tile that has like these trinkets. It's called like a trinket tile. And there's like a thumb, like what, like a thumb when you're sewing and you put that over a thumbler or whatever it's called. A thimble? A thimble. 
thimble? Yeah, yeah. so you have, like, something like... So all these kind of, like, garbage-like items that are shiny and metal so that the crows are actually attracted to it because it's shiny. And so you add mm -hmm. a tile, you add the crows if you add your crows, and then you have this little plastic gem. That's your shiny. And you're going to put your shiny somewhere on this grid and you have to put it on a tile that doesn't have any crows on it. And you're going to put your shiny on it. Then the other player is going to add their <laughs> tile and they're going to put their shiny on the board. And then the crows are going to travel in straight lines to the closest shinies they can see if there's a shiny on the row or column. But if there's two shinies, and they're the same distance apart. If one of them's on a trinket, it's going to be that extra shiny. So then the crows are going to go to the trinket one instead. And if there's a gap, they don't they don't jump over gaps. So then they wouldn't come. And then so you travel all the crows to your shiny, and you get to score. So okay, three crows came to me, so I score three points on the scoreboard then I take my shiny back and now those crows are at that location and I'll add a new tile and then I'll put my shiny again and then you kind of try to create so that you can attract the most crows and try to block like the crows from going to the other players so they don't score as much and then if you ever place your shiny on a tile that didn't have crows on it if you put it on an empty tree that allows you to take um, it's like a card. I don't know, remember what the cards are called. If you have these cards in your hand at the end of the game, it gives you a bonus point. Or you can do the action that's on there. And then, like, the action is you can move some crows or you can, like, you can do and manipulate this, what's happening on the board. So you can kind of like, okay, well, I'm going to move these crows over here. So actually more comes to me and they don't go to you. And like, so it is so interesting. This is such a neat, puzzly, clever game. I was super impressed with it. And you're just like trying to manipulate these. So these crows come to you. And if you ever have a murder that you have six or more crows on the same tile, they spread out. So you take one away and then you put the ones all like around like in a spiral formation and then you kind of spread them out. And it's 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 a good game. It was impressive. And that's my uh number 6 crows. Yeah, a pack of crows is called a murder, right? Yeah. Isn't that weird? <laughs> yeah. Cool. All right. My number 5 is Birds of a Feather, the Western North America. This is made in 2022 by Teal Fristo. Now, I played this a few times, but we brought this to your house and we taught you this. Yeah. And as we were teaching you the game, you could tell that, like, just hearing the rules, you're just like, what? We're just playing I a know card. I know what you're saying. And then yeah, it's like, yeah. That's what we're doing. <laughs> and we're like, yeah, it sounds dumb, but seriously, you're going to like it. It's <laughs> <laughs> All you're literally doing is you are playing cards into the middle. Everyone d chooses a card face down and then you flip it. And these birds have different um, suits and different, there's different types of them because you could have a suit of, now I'm going to think, because each suit has like, you'll have like a crow in the, or a raptor in that suit. You'll have like a one feather, a two wing, a one wing. Um, not the type of bird, but that's just what's at the top of your card. And so it's, whatever card you play, you're going to collect that species or that suit. So the color. So if I play an orange um, one feather bird um, I and, and everybody else played orange, but different ones, I get to collect all those and record them on my score sheet. Now, the next round, we'll play another one. Those will stay in the middle. Now we'll flip another card and whatever card. So say I was, you guys all played orange, but I played blue. And I'm like, oh, I really want to capitalize and get all those orange ones. So I play orange this time. Now I get to record the one I have plus what is all left out there. And so I would get to score all those and the one I have, unless somebody plays a raptor in that suit. So a raptor will scare all those birds away so then you won't get to record them and that's really the only mechanic in it and if you can complete a whole row so basically a whole suit you'll get one extra point which will give you um 10 points i think if you get that whole row that's all that's the whole game you are left with one card in your hand 
and that card is not played, but it could be a tiebreaker. And that basically is it. It doesn't sound like much when you describe it. Even me describing it, you're probably like, well, well yeah, the card. instruction, I was like, I have no <laughs> idea what you're saying to me. <laughs> yeah. We're just putting a card down and then marking it down that we put it down. Like, okay. But no, it's, it is neat. And I can't even explain the strategy in it because it's just, you just have to play it to try it. It's the reason I brought it was because I wasn't sure how many people were going to be at this game day. And it plays up to like seven or eight players. It's I think it's seven. It's a weird player count that it plays up to, but it can be played with a big group, which is nice at the end of a game day <clears throat> to just play something that's like really light and easy, but still like a kind of a take that game. Mm. If you can really get that Raptor down, like imagine if you had seven people and you're like, Ooh, I'm collecting all these. You obviously play with less cards, but and then someone plays a raptor the next round and scares all of them away. I would love to try it with a big player count. But yeah, that's my number five, birds of a feather. Yeah, I was I was impressed with that one for sure. Mm-hmm. All right, my number five is Meadow. And that one is created in 2021 by Tyler Sigman. This is one that, like I said, I was having trouble with my list because I didn't have a lot on it. And then I got thinking mm-hmm. about Meadow and I was like, there's birds in that one. Yeah, so I, I could totally so I didn't count even think it. about that one. No, right. So, and I mean, like with this one, you have your main board that has like a four by four grid of cards and all these mm-hmm. cards have different type of animals. Now, some of them will be birds. Some of them will be like butterflies. Some of them will be like worms. Like there's all these different creatures and then you kind of upgrade them. Like this is a set collection game. So you start with like a terrain and then from the terrain you have to have certain things in order to be able to collect the card now what's interesting too is like okay well i wanna i have the dirt area whatever it it is and then it's like and i want to be able to pick up the worm because it's an easy one to get so then i'm gonna you have these different flags i guess these pointy arrows that have different numbers on it and it's like well i'll put that one over here because and it's the number two and this card is two away from this notch so then it allows me to draw this card and then the card gets replaced or whatever but as you play your round these notch gets filled in and now you're like running out of options of what's available now you could also instead of playing on the grid and collecting the cards and they go in your hand you could also go to like the campfire and tuck in your thing along the round of the campfire and activate a different action that's on this uh on this little flag pointy arrow tile and then you get to activate that action one of them will be like it allows you to go and take any cards in the grid no like so because it get it gets cluttered like it's like shoot i really want this card but i can't get to it there's no notch available anymore or, you know so it kind of mitigates like what you can do you can't just go and get what you want easily but then as you play, so I was like, okay, well, I've played my my grub, so I have that on my board. And then I want to play the bird. Well, the bird needs to have a flower and a grub, which maybe I already have down. Then I can bring in a bird and I can add that to it. And, and then the bird has their own is its own symbol. So now I'll have the bird symbols and so on. And then it gives me access to more cards that I now have symbol that I might be able to play. And so it has a really interesting decisions that you got to do because so, like some cards will go away and you replace. And then it's like, oh, but I needed the grub for this as well. And if I play here, then I don't have the grub anymore. And I have a bird instead, which is great, but it's not what I need to bring out the butterfly. So maybe I'll wait on that. And like, it's, it is an interesting decision process as you play this game. And th- the artwork is unreal. Like each card is like a watercolor painting that was done by the artist. And like, I don't know how many cards, but there's a lot of cards. So there's a lot of these beautiful water painting images in this game. Um, And that's, it's just a neat game. So that's my number five meadow. Yeah, that's a really good one. All right. My number four is Pete Matz made in 2018 by Ben Pinchback and Matt Riddle. This is another thinky card game. Very much, very similar, I would say, to Arboretum as well in, like, Brain Burnie. This one, you are um, set collecting birds, different suits again. But how you do that is 
they are sitting on a perch. There's two birds sitting on a perch and then above them are some cards and they are like um, seeds and there might be some um, squirrels or a crow or something that will, you do not want to get those cards. But what you're doing is you are playing a card on one side of the perch and you're trying to get that card if possible um, by getting a higher amount next to it and then you can take it and you can play a certain amount i can't remember how many you get to play it each time but they go in front of you and these cards will be face up so people can see what you are set collecting you're trying to have the majority of of the suits at the end um, because that's the only way you will score them now depending how you have how much you have greater than what was the perch bird that will be the card you're going to draw on top so Sometimes you might get the bird you want, but then you're getting like a crow that is going to steal a bunch of your cards away. So it's kind of a fine line to, to figure out, okay, do I really want this card because I need it for my set collection, but I don't want that card up there. So you have to figure out which is better or do I wait maybe and just play a card. I don't get any bird yet and wait to see what they play to get rid of that crow there. It's, it's really tough decisions, but the set collecting is neat as well. Cause then at the end you have two cards in your hand that nobody knows what you're playing. So someone might think, Oh, I've got all those, that suit there when you have two left in your hand and you're going to clean up and you get a bunch of points from that. I like the idea of always having that one or two cards at the end of the game and nobody knows what they are. But it's a really cool game. And again, no one will play this one with me. You will, Mel. I think you would like it. And this is Pete Matz, my number four. That sounds interesting. Um, my number four is Cascadia. So the Cascadia was created in 2021 by Randy Flynn. And this one is a... It's really, it's like a tiling, token laying game. There's two puzzles that you're building at once. So first you build the terrain tiles and you'll add these tiles that have different terrains on it. And you're trying to create as large a cluster of the different type of terrain as you can. So you're trying to put your forest together and your mountains together and your, and all of that sort of stuff together. And then on those tiles, there's also little icons of different wildlife animals that can reside at that location. And then you can also put tokens down on the grid that you're creating and creating these different patterns with these animals. So each round you're going to draw a tile and a token but you have to take the ones that are on top of each other so you have like four so you got the four tiles and four tokens associated with them now if you ever have a location that is only one item that can go there and you play that uh one animal that can go there and you can play the animal you get a pine cone and that pine cone if you spend it allows you to break those match and be like well i'm going to take that tile but i'm going to match it up with this token it gives you more control um but you're losing your pine cone and pine cones at the end of the game are also worth points so if you don't have to use them it's best to keep them but one of the animals that you're going to be adding to your grid is the hawk and these are all north american animals so it's kind of cool that these are all animals we see here so you have the bear you have the salmon you have the elk uh, and you have the hawk and the hawk well each animals there's multiple cards for each animals you kind of randomly shuffle and draw different rules for each one and they'll score differently on the type of pattern you're able to create so the hawk and it, it depends but sometimes it's like you if you can create a line between them then you get to score or if you get multiple hawks kind of inter like and you can create like a a zigzaggy pattern where it's all like they're straight lines to each other and the more hawks you have in your zigzaggy pattern then the more points it's going to be worth um and then you know you'll have like the fox that'll score for all the different animals that's around or you know like there's all these different ways of scoring and it changes every game this is when like mostly my brother like really got so into this game and loved it and there's actually a campaign version that you can try to 
playthrough that he and his uh, fiance were doing. And I've never played it that way. I just did the one and done type games. But this is a really neat, quick, simple, satisfying game to play. There's a neat puzzle to it, but it's simple enough to teach and play. And it's easy to get to the table. Um, and then the hawk thing in there is kind of interesting. So that's my number four, Cascadia. Yes, I love this game. It's awesome. All right, my number three is Bird Watcher, made in 2022 by Zakir Jaffrey. Now, this is another card based game, but you do have a player board. Um, what you're trying to do is record a bunch of, or take pictures of a bunch of birds and then kind of record them into your journal, I believe it is, at the bottom. So how you do that is you have these two game boards on top. One has, they both have some birds on them um, and you can take from there. There's a bunch of different actions you can do and then you can place them on top in your tree. And then after that, you would have to take another action to put them in your journal. Now, how you place them in your journal is like, you don't move the cards around. Once you place one, it's stuck there. The next one goes right beside it and then so on and so on. And you can't put anything in the middle there. So you're trying to make sets that like, because you can't have three of one. And then later on, after you have four more cards, grab another one from that set and stick it in there. No, it had to have been when you were starting that set. You can also get these other cards that uh, the name escapes me, but they are like um, some sort of knowledge cards that will give you straight points and they can go after a set. They could go in between, which would cut your set off, but they usually will go after a set and give you a type of scoring of points near the end. It's neat because how you are drawing these cards, some of them you can do an action where you're scaring all the birds away from this one board and then they go to the next board, but then they're covering up birds that you know somebody else would want. So they have to take the actions to take these birds off and get the piles um, cleared so that they can get those birds they want underneath. So there's a lot of, um, there can be a lot of hate drafting in this game or just like hate movement where you're like scaring birds. You're like, I know you want those two really bad because that's going to give you big points. But it's, it's still neat. I had bought this game thinking, okay, is this, someone had compared it to Wingspan. I'm like, really? I got to see this. So I had found it used for like 20 bucks and it's still beautiful. The art is beautiful. And the gameplay is really neat. I really like it. And that's my number three, Bird Watcher. Nice. That one does seem neat. My number three is Evolution, but especially with the Flight expansion. So Evolution Flight was created in 2015 by Dominic Caprichette, Dimitri Knorr, and Sergei Machin. So Evolution is really interesting game because you you build a species and you can give it up to three different traits and as you add traits like it, you know could be like that you build fat tissue so you can store food or maybe you just reproduce very fast or maybe you have a shell that kind of creates extra protection or there's all these different traits that you can add to your species and then you grow your population and you try to grow the the size of your species as well. Um, and every round you will also like, cause you go, add cards to your, you know, to your species to give them the traits. You also at the start of a round, you pick a card and you put it face down into the watering hole and then that gets revealed and it has a certain number of value to it. And that's how much food gets added to the watering hole. So everybody does that. So then that's how much food goes in there. Well, depending on how big of an animal you are and what your population is, how much food you're going to consume. And you take turn going one and one and one and you pull a food until there's no food left. And if you haven't been able to feed your entire species, you're going to, some of your population are going to die off. So then that goes down. And the whole goal of the game, because the food is your victory point. So you're trying to consume as much food as you can. Now you can give your species long necks. So you get the ability to go and draw food first because you can reach further. Um, with the flight expansion, it adds flight to to the game so you can create flying species now it costs a little bit more to create a flying species over a regular species you have to discard two cards instead of one 
Um, but it gives you different things where if you play as a prey, because at some point you can give your species a carnivore trait. And now instead of eating the plants that's available, you, they can go and eat the other animals. Um, and it just kind of gives you access to more food. So you could be a prey flight species. So you can kind of swoop down and it takes away from the, um, some of their like protection abilities that they would have. Cause sometimes as a carnivore, it's hard to get to the, to the preys. Um, or if a prey comes after you, it gives you the ability to fly away. But as a flight species, you cannot get higher than a body mass of three. So it kind of limits as to how big you can go, how much you can protect yourself and then the food that you can get access to. But you can also fly to new food source so you kind of get access to food in different ways as well with that with that one so evolution is a game that the first time i played i was like okay yeah, it was okay and for some reason my kids loved it and they asked to play it again i was like oh, really again like that one can we play something else but then we would play again and i was like oh yeah right that's good and then we play it again it's like oh yeah that's good and then like the last time i played it and every time i play it's like oh my god this is an amazing game and it grows on me every time i play it i love it more so that's my number three evolution especially with the flight expansion yeah, I haven't played it with the flight expansion. I do have the card game version of Evolution, which has flight in it. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. It's very different. It plays very different from the game. All right. My number two is Sikatsu, made in 2017 by Matt Loomis and Isaac Shalev. This one is an abstract strategy game. So this one is my only one that is not a card game. Oh, I guess Trails of Tucana was a, a roll and write, but. This one, it, you have these chunky um, round acrylic tiles that have birds on them um, with surrounded by flowers in the circle. And it's they're really beautiful. They also could have koi fish on them. But what you're doing is you have this board in front of you. And this is actually made for three players. There's not very many games that are made for three players. You can play it with two and you can play it with four. If you're playing it with two, you just use two perspectives of the board because the board is actually made up of three perspectives. Hard to explain, but it's kind of a color direction of what way you are scoring. So you would kind of place the board in front of the person and the way I'm looking at the board, that's how I'm going to score. And then the, the person beside me is looking at it a different way and the third person. If you do it with four people, you do two teams. But what you're doing is you start out with a tile on the board and then you all you're doing is placing a tile out next to one of the birds that is already there, bird or koi. Now, how you're scoring, there's two different types of scoring. There's scoring throughout the game and then there's scoring after the game. And they're completely different. Scoring in the game is just scoring your matching birds. So if I place a blue bird next to another blue bird, I'm going to get two points because I get the one that I have plus the one next to it. If I can figure out how to get my blue bird next to like three other blue birds, I would get four points right away. Now, the thing is the flowers around that bird is what I'm going to score after the game is over. So, or after, sorry, when the game ends, um, then I score those. Now I want to have as many in my perspective rows as many of the same type of flowers as possible. The scoring works, it's like if you have two of the same, you get a certain amount of points. If you have three, you get a lot more, four, even more, and five, you get a big chunk of points. The thing is, the other person is, got, is gonna try to not let you score that because they can see your perspective and they don't want you to have all blue flowers in one row. So they're gonna put some tiles down to like mess you up, but, they also want to get points themselves. So it's like, how much do I go on the offensive and how much do I go on the defensive in this game? It's such a, a thinky little cool abstract game and I just love it. And that's my number two, Sikatsu. Nice. I haven't played that one either. Yeah, it's neat. Like so far, our lists have been quite different mm -hmm. until now. This is a crossover. Yeah. And I suspect our number one is going to be the same as well. Another <laughs> crossover. But my number two is Birds of a Feather. So Birds of a Feather was published in 2015, but that's the original version by Till right. Fristo. Yeah. The one we played is the Western North America, which was created in 2022. 
<clears throat> Excuse me. And this one was really neat. So it's a set collection game. You're just trying to get access to these different birds so you can mark them off on your on your sheet. And like you mentioned, there's the different type of birds. And I think there's what six different style. And each style of birds like are from different terrain. So you get the mm -hmm. like the wood birds, and then you get the aquatic birds, and then all these different terrains. And that's the suit. And then each bird's gonna have um the egg and the one feather and the two feather and the three feather. And then you get the one wing and the two wing and the claw and so on. And, <clears throat> um, and there's like some cards are more rare than others. So there'll be multiple three feathers out there in the game for this, all the same terrain and so on. And you place like a, like, Carla mentioned the first one you place you flip it over you get to uh, mark off the the cards you played and you get to mark off all the other birds that were played of the same suit the same terrain and then you mark those off on your sheet and then those go in the middle and then you add another one and you're like okay well I've just played the blue and matched the other blue but there's two orange here so I'm going to play an orange and try to score those and then you bring your orange so you get to tally that and then you could score all the other orange that got played this round and the previous round unless somebody played the claw and the claw ch chases away the previous round so you would just get to match up this current round but then you would still say, like, okay, well, you played the orange claw, so I get to mark your claw, but I don't get to mark all these other birds from the last round. Thank you very much. But, you know, so it's so interesting. And then if you ever complete a whole suit, then you get bonus points for that. And after you've played all the cards, and I think you get 14 cards, after you've played all 14 cards, then you tally up your all the cord, uh, points you've collected because each point, each cards are worth different amounts. Like the egg is worth nothing. Unless it completes your suit. But the one feather is worth one star and so on. And so like the more rare the card, the more stars they're worth. And then that's like your points. And then if so, you tally up all your points and then whoever has the most win. It was really neat. I want it. And <laughs> I was like, oh, okay, so 401 Games has it. And I was like, ah, oh, but, you know, I was like, do I, do I meet the minimum? But I said, just reorganized all my games. I'd have to fit it in. <laughs> <sighs> I'm going to get it. But I'm I'm holding off for a bit. <laughs> so. oh, yeah, we'll, we'll find it somewhere for you for sure. Yeah. So that's my number two. First crossover, birds of a feather. Nice. First crossover. Okay. So you're predicting that our next one will be. Well, I think everybody's guessed what mine is probably, but and probably yours too. Number one is Wingspan, made in 2019 by Elizabeth Hargrave. I absolutely love this game and. I loved it when I bought it and then it kind of faded away a little bit, but then the expansions kind of brought it back and I just love it more. And this new expansion with the duet, I don't know if you've played that one, but it is awesome because it, the, the base game alone is great. You are just building a tableau of birds. They each have different powers, whether they're like round powers, um, depending if you play them, you get a power. If you, um, work through them with your actions because your action will start at the end and you get to work back through all the birds and, and do those powers. Some will affect other players. Some things that other players do will give you something. You are gathering these resources, worms, bur uh, fish, rats, and berries, and trying to, those are what you use to build your cards and put your birds in each terrain. It's such a, an interesting game and I just love it. And it, like, I wasn't a big bird fan before, like the theme wouldn't have just pulled me in, but I love all these bird games now that has definitely made me appreciate birds and just the art of them. And it's just such an awesome game. I love it. But yeah, you definitely have to try the duet version because there's mm. another whole board that you use. You get to place these little um, chips on and then get other bonuses from them every time you build a bird or put one on your board it's just awesome but yeah that's my number one i'll let you talk about it as well because i think that's your number one it is my number one <laughs> is wingspan honestly who out there would make a bird game list and not have wingspan yeah, as their number one exactly. it's it's the most popular bird game out there by far um components are amazing the all the trays that it comes with like the way that it all comes together that's really well thought out as well it was neat um 
And like it comes with like you build up like that little dice tower and then that kind of controls every like the whole thing looks good. I had played the first time me Lee and he was just re like newly getting into games and that one was just too much and he didn't like it. So we never played it again. I don't own it. And then a friend brought it over like the Acme local group. Um, the ladies from Acme. So they brought it over. We got playing it. And I was like, oh, that is a good game. Mm. And I know the Asia expansion is standalone as well. Yeah. So now I was like, do I get Wingspan? Should I get Asia? Should I? I, I don't know. Like, I, I want yeah. this. I want to add do it to my collection. Do you not have the game? No. Then just start with Asia. Because it's the base game that you can play with, like, whoever. But it's got the duet in it. And you can play that. In yeah, the so that's what I'm thinking. I might just yeah. go and start there, right? Because, yeah, I don't yeah. have the base game. So, but it is such a neat engine building game. Yeah. And, like, you have this special goal that you're trying to do. Now we played. Now my goal was I would score if I, like, if I, like, the more of a certain type of birds you had, the more you would score at bonus points at the end. And I was going for big birds. So if they had a wingspan of over oh. so much, then I would, well, frick, all the birds down the board were tiny birds. <laughs> and it was so difficult. And plus, once you finally get a nice big bird, they cost a lot to bring up. Yeah. Like they and have a higher price. <laughs> yeah. So it was it, it like uh, that bonus did not happen for me. And I was like, oh my God, what is with all these big freaking birds not coming up? <laughs> it's okay. like, and then finally one would come up. I was like, okay, great. And then the girls would buy them. I'm like, no. <laughs> so it's like Oh my god! But it was—it's such a neat game. It's so satisfying to play. It is funny they had owned the game, they played it, and I'm like, mm, don't think like I ended up finding a like four or five rules they weren't playing quite right, and I was like, mm, seems to me it's like this. But let me double check. And she's like, oh yeah, we've been playing that wrong. <laughs> and it's like by the end of the game, it's like, wow, this is like a whole different game now <laughs> from the way they had been playing, but. It's 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 a good one. So yeah, yeah. I do I do want to add this to my collection. So oh for sure yeah I should yeah, yeah look at wingspan Asia and then it's really good. Wonderful. Yeah. So awesome. yeah, so that was my number one, our second crossover. Perfect. All right. Well, that's our top nine bird games. Now in two weeks we are going to have a special guest. Yes. And this guy is going to talk about a, a board game adjacent kind of hobby, which. To me, it's almost meshing in with board games for myself because it's half my hobby almost now. Hundred um, percent. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's but a lot. Of, he does. He reviews escape rooms, like the one, the physical ones you go to. But he also reviews um, escape like um, puzzle games that I'm so into lately. And he also is a board gamer, not like to the extent we are, but he does <laughs> board games as well. He actually listens to our um, podcast. And so I'm so excited to be able to interview him and talk about this. He works with a company that um, escape or reviews escape rooms all over the world. And they have a YouTube channel. And I'll let him talk about it. We'll discuss it then. But it's really cool to watch some of them in like Europe and like just all over the world, how fascinating they are and the kind mm. of things they do. And it's it's really cool, but we'll be getting to interview him and have some really cool questions and hear what he has to say. So yeah, that'll be until, interesting for sure. Yeah. I'm looking forward to chatting with him. Yeah, it'll be neat. Um, but until then, where can people find you? So I'm on Instagram as Mel's underscore board game underscore room. Um, my Facebook page is Mel's Board Game Room, and my YouTube channel is Mel's Board Game Room. How about you, Carla? Where can we find you? I'm on Instagram at Board Game Specialist, all one word, and I have a Facebook page called Red Deer Board Game Fanatics. And we also have a Discord channel. Yes. So be sure to join that. We'll add the link below. Um, and it's just, you know, kind of neat way to interact and chit chat with us and other people that are follow us and it gets some interesting conversations. Mm -hmm. Lots of nice pictures. We have our, um, a lot of our collections are in there and whatnot. Right. And 
that's kind of neat. Yeah. I haven't posted my, my, my new setup. I should go post oh, that yeah. on there. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's completely different. While it lasts. So. <laughs> <laughs> right. Until more come to live with you. <laughs> that's right. Cause you know, they're coming at least wingspan yeah. Asia and birds yeah. of a feather. So. Right. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for listening everybody. And we'll see you next time. Bye.